Hello, welcome to Blackheath High. I'm Mr Crozier and I'm a history teacher and today we're going to be learning all about what were the ancient Britons like. So first things first, we have to understand what is history. Well history is an investigation of the past. Essentially we're being like detectives. Now with that in mind, on the way into school today I found this bag. Hmm. Now you might be thinking to yourself, who owns this bag? Well, we can look at the things inside. Uh, there seems to be uh, one empty water bottle, um, a pencil case. What else have we got? Uh, um, some Lemsip, uh, other brands are available. Uh, we've also got um, some rather swanky tissues. Now, what we're hoping to do with history is piece things together and understand the past. So with this in mind, let's draw what this person would look like. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could do this at home. So take a piece of paper and a pencil and try and draw the person. Now, I'm going to start. Um, so I'm thinking with this bag, perhaps uh, there's somebody uh, with uh, maybe some old style clothes on or uh, possibly something along these lines. And then maybe a beard and uh, well, clearly that's me. Um, now obviously what we're going to be looking at today is going to be much more difficult because we're going to be exploring people thousands of years ago, the ancient Britons. So we're going to be looking at the ancient Britons. Now when did the ancient Britons live? Now to understand that we have to understand a little bit about what's called chronology. Now chronology is simply putting things in their right time order. Now to do this at home what I'm going to do is give you a series of events or people and then you have to tell me what order they go in. So we're going to start with the latest first and then move all the way down um, to the one that was longest ago. Okay are we ready? Here we go. Um, so when you were born, that's you not me, obviously I was born hundreds of years ago, but yourself. Um, what about Henry VIII? What about the Roman invasion of Britain? The Great Fire of London? Um, the First World War? When Queen Victoria reigned? The Second World War? 1066? And the abolition of slavery? Now take all those events and put them in the right order with the thing that's happened the most recent, then all the way down to the earliest. So hopefully you've got all those people and all those events in the correct order. If you hadn't, don't worry about it. So let's see who we got. So uh, the first one, well that'll be you being born. Um, the next one would be the Second World War. And before that we have the First World War. And then we move into the 19th century or the 1800s with Queen Victoria. And then early on in that time period in the 1800s we have the abolition of slavery. And if you're around in the 17th century and you're in these areas, you might have been unfortunate enough to see the Great Fire of London burning everything down to the ground. And if you're around in the 1500s, uh, during the time of the Tudors, you would have seen Henry VIII and maybe met one of his many wives. Now, if we move back a little bit further, we get to 1066, the Battle of Hastings. And the only thing in our timeline earlier than that was the Roman invasion of Britain in 43 AD. Now, we were here to look about the ancient Britons. So we're going to have a hypothesis. Now what's a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a theory you test. So at home you might want to think about, well, what were the ancient Britons like? You could write down on your piece of paper, I think the ancient Britons were like, and then when we get to the end of this lesson you can test it and see if you were correct. Now we've got a bit of a problem because when it comes to the ancient Britons they didn't write anything down. They're what's called prehistoric. So how do we find out about people in the past who have left us no written record? Now what I want you to do, and you can ask a parent in the room, they might be able to help you, is to come up with different ways that we can find out about the past. We can't just rely on the internet or a book. We've got to think a bit more cleverly here. Um, so I'm going to give you 10 seconds to come up with as many ideas as you can. Go! I'm not sure how many you've got, but these are the ones that I came up with. Uh, for example, we could look at their bones. We know those get left behind. There might be some DNA evidence to find out what they were like. We could also see other things they've left behind. Could be buildings, although bear in mind, anything organic 
for example, wood will have rotted. Um, or there might be artefacts, maybe a sword or a shield or a brooch. Who knows? Uh, then we have what other people wrote about them. Now, if you've got more than me, hats off to you. OK, I have four sources for you for the ancient Britons. For each of these sources, I want you to look at it and think, what does this tell us about the ancient Britons? Also, I want you to think, do I have any other questions I'd like to ask about this? And then thirdly, what I want you to do is think, is this source useful to me? Are there any problems with it? So here is something written by somebody else who met the ancient Britons. This is from Julius Caesar, who invaded Britain. And he sent his report back to the people of Rome. He said, by far the most civilized of the Britons are those who live in Kent. Their entire country borders on the sea, and they do not differ much from the Gauls, that's the French, in customs. Very many live in land. They do not sow grain, but live on milk and flesh, clothing themselves in skins. All the Britons paint themselves with woad, which produces a dark blue color. And for this reason, they are much more frightful in appearance in battle. They permit their hair to grow long, shaving all parts of their body except their head and their upper lip. This is the Battersea Shield. It was found in 1857 in the mud of the River Thames. These are bones found in Dorset of a human skeleton, but also of a cow, a horse, and a dog. And finally, we have a building in Orkney. Now, normally at this point, I'd ask for your feedback and all your hands would shoot up and I'd get lots and lots and lots of great ideas. As it is, unfortunately, I can't see what you've written, but I'm sure it was great. Now, with this first source, we're looking at Julius Caesar, and he tells us all about what they wore, uh, their interesting fashion with their moustache, um, and their interesting thing of dressing themselves in blue. Now, we might ask several questions about this. Why is Julius Caesar writing this? We might also think, how useful is this? Because if you're writing something back to your Roman friends, maybe you want to make the British seem as fearsome as possible, so that when you've defeated them, you look like a great hero. And on to the shield. Now, you might ask questions like, what is this made of? Well, it's made of bronze. You might tell us that this means that the ancient Britons were great warriors. But you might also question, did everyone have a shield like this? And you might also think to yourself, is this actually any use in battle? The answer is, no, it's not. It's too flimsy. If any Roman tried to stab you, their sword would go straight through this shield. So we think that this was a shield mainly used for a chieftain, and possibly he was buried with it. So, looking at these bones, what's going on here? We're not sure, really. It could be that these people were buried with the animals they'd loved throughout their life. It could be that they'd been put on a big funeral pyre, and they'd all kind of tumbled down together. Some people even suggest that what's going on here is that the ancient Britons were trying to combine their dead people with horses and cows and all sorts to create some kind of superhuman. Frankly, we don't really know. So, this is the building in Orkney. Now, what does this mean? Well, it shows us that the Britons did indeed have houses. It might suggest to you that the British people were very, very small, little hobbit people. But that's unlikely. If you've ever been to Orkney, you'll find it's very windy and very cold. So you'll want quite a short door. Now, you might ask yourselves, did all Britons have houses like this? We're not entirely sure. OK, so we've learnt lots about the ancient Britons. Now, if you remember, you wrote a hypothesis as to what you thought they were like. Go back and check it. Were you correct? Or do you need to add a little more? Also, at the beginning of the lesson, I drew a rather natty picture of myself. What I'd like you to do now is draw a picture of what you think ancient Britons were like. Then you can send it to us here at Blackheath High. Thank you very much for listening. I hope to see you soon.